Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to walk you through grammar exercise one from chapter 20 of the Road to Latin textbook. Now like I always tell you in these videos, if you want more resources on chapter 20 or anything from Road to Latin, feel free to take a look at my website, you'll find everything there. But what I'm going to do in this video is walk you through the answer key and give you some grammar explanations for it. Now before we go into it, like I always tell you in these videos, the first thing you want to do is make sure that you've actually read through the grammar. So you should read the notes, whether you're using the actual Road to Latin textbook or my version of my website, just read through. This is all about future tense. Um, so you want to make sure that you've practiced a little bit, you've at least read through the notes, and you've translated the story. So the Road to Latin stories do a great job of putting the grammar into um, context, right? So the whole story is, is basically using the grammar. Um, so that should always be your first start. Then use these grammar exercises to make sure that you really understood the nuts and bolts of it, okay? So before you do anything with this video, make sure that you've looked at the grammar exercises, um, particularly grammar exercise one, you've done it yourself, you've reviewed the notes, and that way you can use this video as a double check to make sure that you're on the right track. Okay, so grammar exercise one starts like this. There's three parts. Part one says give the English translation of the following Latin verb forms. So you have about, what, more than 10 of them here, 15, whatever that might be. And you're just taking a look and trying to see. They're all um, a future tense, right? You're trying to figure out how to translate them based on are they active or passive and what um, person and number they are. So the first one you have is time beres. So this is future tense. You can tell by the BE. Remember, second person um, singular when you're doing a passive uh, voice verb like this will be BE instead of BI. But basically, you're doing bo, be, 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 boo. That's how you know it's future. So the RIS ending gives it away as being passive. This just means you will be feared. Now the next one is wokabimini, uh, woka right? So the um, bi here again gives it away as being future. <clears throat> the mini ending, the mini ending, is second person plural. So this is the verb to hear, right? Or sorry, to call rather. Um, wokare. So this is translated as you all will be called, right? Someone's going to call you, and you're going to hear it. Okay. Next, we have ero. This is a future tense form of the verb to be. The O ending is active voice. It just means I will. The next verb we have is habebit, right? Again, the BI gives it away as being future tense. The T is an active voice ending. It's third person singular. This just means he, she, or it will have. Next, we have um, delectabon, right? The BU makes it future. NT is an active voice ending. It's third person plural. It just means they will delight. Next, you have tenebis, right? This is the verb tenere, to hold. BI makes it future. S is second person singular, active voice. So this just means you will hold. Next, you have docabitor, right? So the BI makes it future. TUR here is a passive ending. It's third person singular, passive. So it's the verb to teach, but passive, it's he, she, or it will be taught. Next, you have eremus, right? It's again, the verb to be. It just means we will be. The same with the next one, eritus just means you all, y'all will be, right? Just future tense. Then you have mone bore, right? The bore ending is first person singular, passive, right? So bo, be, 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 boo makes it future. The R makes it passive. It's, it's saying I will be warned. It's the verb to warn, monere. Next, you have sedebitus, right? The BI makes it future. TIS is second person plural. It's active voice. It just means y'all will sit or you all will sit. And last in this section, you have clamabo. This is just first person singular, active voice, future tense. It means I will shout. Okay? Then you go on to the second part, right? The second section it says give the Latin for the following verb forms. These are in English. You're giving the Latin. So we just did Latin English. Now you're doing English to Latin. Okay, so you have I will fear, uh, fear, I shall fear, timebo, right? It's the verb timere, to fear, it's active voice, it's first person singular, to make it future, just go bo, be, 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 boo, it's timebo. Next, you have he will be called. This is going to be vocabitor. It's third person singular, passive voice, future tense. Next, you have we shall be delighted. It's passive. You can tell by the be delighted part, right? So think of delectare, the verb to delight. We is um, first person, uh, first person plural rather, but it's passive. So it's M-U-R. So it's going to be delectabe more, right? We will be delighted. Next, you have you will hold. Um, this is the verb tenere. You will hold is just active voice, second person singular. It's going to be tenebis. Think bo, be, 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 boo. 
Then you have you will be seen. Again, passive voice, will be seen. It's going to be we deberes, right? So the uh, the you here, I'm assuming, is singular. You normally wrote to Latin. We'll put a little PL or something if it's plural. So if it's a singular form, um, remember when you go bo, be, 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 boo, passive voice, it's going to be be. So instead of bo, be, bi, it's going to be be. We deberes, right? You will be seen. Next, you have they will be. It's just the verb to be. Erunt is the ending, or is the, the form, rather. Then you have, you will be taught. Again, assuming it's singular, um, they didn't mark plural, so we'll assume it's not you all. Um, you just take dokere to teach, make it passive because it's you will be taught. It's going to be doke beres. Again, B-E-R-I-S is what gives it away as being future passive. Next, you have, I shall be praised or I will be praised. Again, laudabor. It's just B-O-R is the passive um, first person singular ending for, uh, for passive voice. And then the B-O is what's making it um, future. Okay. So next, you have, you will be cared for. Again, passive voice um, verb. So curaberes, right? So again, curare means to take care of or care for something. Curaberes is just um, second person singular. And lastly, you have, they will ask. Okay, so for this, you take rogare, the verb to ask. They will ask is active voice, third person plural, rogabunt, right? B-U-N-T is the ending you're looking for. Okay. So now we get to the last exercise. So hopefully those have been all good so far. But in exercise three, it says give the present and imperfect tense um, forms of the above verbs in the indicated person and number. So in other words, you go back to part two. You want to put all the verbs that you have, right, the Latin, and flip them to present and imperfect. This is actually a pretty good exercise to see how they all relate to each other and what they would look like across the three tenses. So the first verb we have is timebo, right? In the present, it's timeo, right, with an EO ending. And in the uh, imperfect, it would be time bomb, right? So you can kind of see how the endings all work together. Next, you have vocabator. That would be vocator if it was present and vocabator if it was imperfect. Next, you have delectab uh, delectabimor. That would be delectamor in the present and delectabamor in the imperfect. Next, you have tenebis, right? Um, that would be tenes in the present and tenebas in the imperfect. Next, you have videbaris, or sorry, videbaris, rather. That would be videris in the present and videbaris in the imperfect. Next, you have um, errant, right? It's the verb to be. That would be sunt, they are, in the present, and errant, they were, in the imperfect. Next, um, you have dokeberis. That would be uh, dokeris in the present and dokebaris in the imperfect. Next, you have laudabor, right? That would be laudor in the present and laudabar in the imperfect. Next, you have curaberis, that would be curaris in the present and curabaris in the imperfect. And the last one you have is rogabant. That would be rogant in the present and rogabant in the imperfect. Okay, so hopefully all of that made sense. Um, this this uh, grammar exercise is a really good one because you can kind of put all the future tense stuff together. And in gram and um, part three of grammar exercise one, you can compare it to the present and the imperfect. There's a lot of good stuff here. So hopefully this all made sense. Um, and you you know your answers were were matching mine. You can feel pretty confident about that. But if you have any questions at all, put them in the comments below. If you saw a mistake I made or anything like that, just tell me and I'll fix it. Um, but otherwise, you can use this as a double check to make sure that you're you're feeling. Really Really good about the grammar and as long as you got pretty close to all of them correct um, you can feel pretty confident to move on good luck